<clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Xbox Life episode 355. Green, 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 as in green. 358. 358, what'd I say? You said 355. Oh, cheesy cow, I'm way off. You're bloopering on oh. the intro. Oh, jeez, I don't know. Uh, and that's your second chance at the intro tonight. I did it right the first time. It sounded spectacular. <laughs> I'm Brian BJ Swick 33 in the middle. Uh, one of the hosts, Mark Wingman709, or also known as Mr. Sick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, also Rob Presar. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hello, hello. So we are we are live right now, correct? So hopefully no massive delay. We had a massive delay on Twitch a minute ago, so it was like, well, I don't think we're live. And then all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, now we are. So it was massive. Yeah, seems to be working now. Yeah, it was a good like thirty or thirty seconds or so. No, it was more than that. Yeah, it was longer because yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we all have right. a, a, I'll say possibly a quick show. Maybe one of our quicker shows. Uh, we we will see based on how we chit chat and everything. But um, uh, before we get started, listen to us on Twitch TV every Wednesday, 10 p.m. Like we are right now. And uh, first off, we're going to talk about what we've been playing. So, Rob, we will let you go first. All right. So for me, this was a big week for racing games. It seems I got to play the Forza demo. Uh, some more played it through again uh, while my son watched. Um, it was surprisingly short the second time around. It seemed a lot shorter <laughs> the second time I played it, although I'm sure it was the same length because it only gets gives you, what, four races before uh, you're basically done, and uh, that's what you need to unlock that Ford car, I believe, as well. But uh, other than that, been playing some Forza Horizon uh, with my son also, and uh, I busted out Forza Horizon 2 from uh, the archives, and I played that a little bit. And one thing was really odd about Forza, and I think this happened to me a couple weeks, or Forza Horizon 2, and I think this happened to me a couple weeks back as well, is that when I started it up, it actually aired out on me. And then it said uh, Forza Horizon has taken too long to start. And then it dumped me into one of those cryptic Microsoft error messages that I just can't stand because they're always like 0x800049B4. <laughs> and then you do a search online for that exact number. And then it like goes back to somebody trying to run stacker on windows 95 or something, you know, it just, I, you know, it's like a mem maker error yeah. from 20 years ago. Are, are you serious? Yeah. But, but then I just crossed my fingers and I restarted and it seems to work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause mine was like, it didn't throw error messages at me. It just like stayed on the launch screen and did like the spinning loading thing. Okay, like yeah, two yeah. or three times, and I actually had to restart my Xbox to get Wh it to which one was this Forza Six demo. Oh, the demo. Okay, yeah, yeah I was talking about Forza Horizon oh, too. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I mean, it it could be something tied to the preview program. Who knows? Yeah, true. Or just having to restart. But anyway, yeah. uh, second time around, it started up, and uh, it was it was good. It was good to get back into. Uh, Forza Horizon 2 in particular, just because of the open, open worldliness of it. Uh -huh. It's kind of hard to say, worldliness. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I played a little bit of that, and then I've been continuing uh, Dishonored Definitive Edition that I started up last week. And, man, this game is... It fooled me. <laughs> It fooled me big time. Have you been playing it anymore, Brun? I have not gotten. Uh, no. We'll talk about. I'll talk about what I've been playing, but no, I didn't okay. get to play any of no. that. So, did you get past the party? Yeah, okay. yeah, I did. Okay, I think that's and, right where uh, I passed. But yeah. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, there's a fair amount of game in this thing, especially if you're doing the side quests and such. 
And it got to this part of where like, oh, wow, I'm done. This thing wasn't that bad. And then it starts, you know, going to the next section. You're like, oh, I'm not done. Yeah. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> There's like a little twist to the game where it kind of tricked me. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm wondering what but, is what is the DLC and what is the original game? Because I don't know if the DLC... I'd have to read about the DLC to see if it was just additional missions like after the game. So maybe yeah. what you're bumping into is actually the DLC. So the real game ended, and I don't know. I have to look it up because I was curious on that, what the DLC actually is. So, Yeah, it's a good point. I, I think I'll look into that. But, I mean, it was seamless right? when things took a big change. And, uh, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look that up and maybe uh, give it a chit-chat next time around. Okay. But... Yeah, that's uh, pretty much about it for me. Uh, just those things. And I don't think I played any of the indie games. Remember, I was looking at them. No, I'm pretty sure I didn't. So, okay, I'm done. Next. All right. Um, I played the Forza 6 demo. Um, it's Forza. Uh, yeah. I think Mickey Worm, if you're listening, your drive avatar aggravated me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like here i am like driving i'm like oh i'm gonna get a nice clean pass and here comes mr worm slams in the side of me and then is tailing me all the way down almost spins me i'm just like what what is going on it's like that's it i've had it <laughs> um but i i will say that you you were talking about uh indianapolis 500 uh yeah. the indie race that was probably my favorite um I don't know. Yeah, if, I don't know if it was just because it's an o, you know, or oval or whatever you want to say. If it's more NASCAR like, but um, I, I felt the speed in that one, where the oh, other yeah. ones I really kind of didn't because you're always braking and turning and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I did that. Uh, I yeah, played, and they've um, got a little bit of like a motion blur effect to it, and then yeah. the shakiness. And such. Were you doing the in-car view, or did you do over or bumper? What view did you play it on? Uh, multiple. I did in-car. I did, a, I did them all. I switched yeah. them out. Because um, yeah. I really like to play in-car, actually. Um, really? Yeah, I, I think it's fun. Um, but I also like the hood view. So you're oh, not yeah. down on the ground, but you're on the hood. Yep. Um, it lets you kind of get... I think it makes you it helps you pass better. Um, yeah, because you're up higher. Yeah, yeah. technically. But, uh, yeah, played that. Uh, I played uh, World of Tanks a little bit uh, with some people and played Battlefield 4 on the PC because it was double XP. And then I went to Battlefield 4 on the console to see if anybody was playing because it was also double XP. I think I went from, like, level 5 to level 24 or something like that. Um, had a good time. Um, I don't know if it's the PC person in me playing Battlefield since I haven't played on a console for a long time, or I have, but really haven't as much as I have on the PC. But, man, like, I hate shotguns as it is, but they are... There's, it's almost like they stopped working on gun balancing on the console. It, I, I feel like they work on it a little bit more on the PC because I'm getting hit with a shotgun from, like, halfway across the map. And I know that used to be a problem in the PC, but they kind of corrected it. So I'm, I'm not sure, but it's just like everybody runs with a shotgun. And I, I call those the no-talent weapons uh, for a reason. Um, but, yeah, it was just, you know, a couple rounds. I was like 35 and something. And, you know, but, um, and then also yesterday I downloaded the massive Destiny 2.0 uh, patch and uh, kind of logged into it to see some of the differences and things. Um, it's different. I think we'll talk a little bit about it a little bit later, but, uh, I only played, I only went in with like each one of my characters and kind of completed some things, but, uh, I'll talk, I'll talk about that when we, when we go over the, uh, 2.0 thing. So, but that is it. And I'm excited to hear what Mr. Wingman is playing. So I'll let him take it away. All right. I'm going to do my best to get through this without coughing. <laughs> I will keep myself muted. Um, but first, before I talk about 
what I've been playing, I want to give a big, big shout out to Griffey95. He came through, and I got a nice little package in the mail today from him. He found Hunter the Reckoning on original Xbox, which I have been unable to find. Oh. Um, he also sent me, oh, what was, there was another game too. I, I forgot what it's called. Um, I'll look it up real quick because I had sent him a uh, message. Oh, Jade Empire. Oh. <clears throat> so he he sent that to me as well. So I've expanded my original Xbox today, and I it just showed up today, so I didn't get a chance to play it. Um, and uh, I will be playing it this week for sure. So next week, I will talk to you about what I've played on original Xbox. Uh, I can't wait to play it. I am so excited. That was like my favorite game on the original Xbox. So... Um, Griffey, thank you very much. Um, also, I wanted to just give him another shout out too because um, I, you know, I asked him. I said, "Hey, you know, uh, what's your PayPal or whatnot? I'll shoot you the money." And he said, "No, nah, don't worry about it. Just just contribute that to the community." So on top of that, he's he's just saying, "I don't need my money. Just put it in the community." So our community bucket just went up again. Some more money, thanks to him. So. Um, and yeah, we have got all our equipment done, so we will be giving away stuff back to the community here pretty darn quick. So uh, maybe here next month we'll be able to start doing some giveaways again. Just in time for Christmas. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we appreciate all you guys' support, um, and you will see that come back to the community now that we've got all our equipment purchased. <laughs> it, took um, a while. it took a while, but... It took a while, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a lot to it, so yeah. I think the next thing is what, green screens? Yeah, behind us. Yeah. So you don't see my my pink and blue and purple boxes and my pictures. You just see our heads hovering over the background. Yeah, I can move us around and make the pictures bigger. It'll be it'll be kind of nice. So. We could do like one of those jib jab uh, <laughs> dance things while we're. All right. Uh, so, uh, so what I did play this week, I did play the Forza Six demo. Um. I, I basically just did it because I already had purchased the Forza 6 game. Um, but I'm like, oh, you get the Ford GT free, you know, in your in your uh, stable or whatever, your garage if you uh, play the demo. So I tried it. Um, I got to say this. I was, I'm pretty excited. Um, it is Forza Brun. However, this is very different than any other Forza before it. Um, oh, so... There's several different reasons. Things I noticed just in the demo. Number one, um, that indie car race mm -hmm. was. I had to go. I always play like the furthest out, looking down at the car. There's right. two levels, so I'm always the furthest one out. I couldn't drive that race that way. I had to be in the cockpit view right. for that race, and it was going so fast. Yeah. It was just, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is so fast. You really felt, I mean, I was just, you know, I don't recall playing Forza where I'm doing 230. And I mean, I know like Horizon 2, I've done it, but there was something about being at the Brickyard and going that fast in that game. It just, I was flying around that track and it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, the nighttime driving was was pretty neat as well. I did enjoy that. It made it. It, it added a different something different because everything was always daytime driving. It's it, everything was perfect condition, you know. Sometimes right. you might have the sun in your eyes, but it was always daytime. So it's nice to see the nighttime driving get a little change. And oh my gosh, driving in the rain. It was I was expecting weather like Forza Horizon two. What I was not expecting was accurate weather effects on your vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like when you're riding on that track, and I, you know, you come around that first corner, and there's water on the track. There's like all different parts. There's puddles actually forming on the track, and when you hit that, it actually affects your driving as if you you know, for real life, you know, when you're driving around, you hit a big puddle, it slows your car down, it pulls your car, it did that in the game, and then at one point, I hit one, and it, 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 I hit it just right where it kind of spun me, and I hydroplaned off 
of the track. Um, and another time I kind of come around a corner too fast and slid off. And when I hit the grass, yeah, it's like ice. You, it, yeah. It just kept sliding, you yeah. know, at least in, in other games when it's not raining, you, you can stop and you can still turn. And yeah. you know, you, you, my instinct was to turn and get back on the track. I turned and my car just kept going straight. I was right. like, wow. I'm like, that is really cool. I'm like, that's exactly what would happen. So the weather, the rain really made that race a challenge mm-hmm. and it was fun. And, and what stunk about it was like one of the tracks that I hate. I, I hate that track. <laughs> Sebring? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know why, but I struggle on that track. That is a really hard one for me. And, and then now they added rain to it. <laughs> so, and, you know, one thing I noticed on that one too, the second time I played it through, not the first time, but the second time through, I didn't go in and tweak any of the difficulty settings. I didn't change anything, whereas the first time I did. Uh-huh. And the game was doing this really funky braking. It was assisted uh, braking on there. You got to turn yeah. that off. Yeah, yes. that was so annoying. Yeah, yeah. It, it's that's default. And you have to go in and that's the that's I always go in and turn that off. Yeah. Yeah. So I already know from Forza history, that's always on by default. So. Yeah. Okay. And it really slows you down, like slower than you would be able to drive on your own. I mean, it makes it, it t- makes the difficulty a little bit, but um, I, I well, it's like when you want to go around a corner faster, it actually slows you down. It's like, yeah. no, we're going to break. It's like, no, go for it, man. I got this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like my driving style is I go into corners hot. And I bounce off of other cars to keep <laughs> me in the on the inside. That's <laughs> what I do. do. That. I do the same that. thing. So, but um, yeah, I really, I was, I really liked it. Um, I wasn't gonna get it because it, it is, it, it is another Forza. And one of the things that <clears throat> I've heard on other shows is Forza. This, and, and everybody's been raving about how good this game is. It's getting great reviews. I mean really good reviews but it's like there's no hype for it because it's almost like they're they are a victim of their own success they're so good that's like how do you top yourself you know you know oh it's gonna be it's forza it's gonna be fabulous it's but it's like yeah it's forza it's almost hard to get excited about it but they did a fantastic job on this game from what i've seen in the demo the 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 racing in the water is going to be very interesting um i like the nighttime there's some new tracks so i'm ready to play it I, i'm looking forward to it i really did enjoy the demo and i'm glad i played it yeah, if it, if anybody hasn't done the demo out there go do the demo and i will say like during the rain one of the coolest things is make sure you're in the cockpit view yeah and just yeah. look at the streaks of rain going up your windshield and it, ri- it reminds me of like me driving down the highway with like rain x you know like got rain x on my windshield and like yeah. everything streaking i mean i looked at it, i'm just like this looks, this looks just amazing i mean i really liked i really liked it uh, unfortunately with um i think forza 4 i got all i got forza and all the cars and everything i don't know if i'm gonna pick this one up but it's like really one of those things where it's like i think i should but then should i this, or this I, maybe is the I'll, one i eventually would. i'll eventually have it that's that's my thing. Is I think I'll eventually have it. I don't know getting it now if that would be me like sitting on it for a couple months before I got to play it. So why not just wait those couple months? So you see, this this franchise almost seems like this is one where you should skip every other year. You know, uh, Forza Two was was really good. That was the first one I played. Right. Same. Here. And then I played Forza Three, and it felt like Forza Two Point Five. Mm-hmm. Um, Forza Four was pretty good. I, I did enjoy that. And then five was just like, you know, I bought it because it was a console release. It was out the same day as the Xbox One, you know, and there really was nothing there. It was just more Forza, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm like, man, I really wasn't gonna buy this, but I felt I had to because I own every Forza game, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, how can I not buy Forza Six? You know, it's a completionist. It, it's just like out. I feel like I have to be loyal to the game because it's so good, but. It's just it it's it is. It feels like it's the same thing every year. Yeah. And it's just like, really? I'm gonna drive around the same tracks again and do the same races. So I, I like the weather and the night. I think it really is going to add a big change. Um I like that they've added um I'm not sure if I'm gonna like the mods 
Uh, I don't know. No one mentioned that, but there's mods, yeah, which right. is like things you can think of um, burn cards from Titanfall. Yeah. Um, the uh, Plants vs. Zombies, those little card packs. So you can, and you can, looks like they're probably going to have option to go in and buy those with real money if you want to buy some packs and then it unlocks things like uh, better grip. I got I got three of them because it, it let me unlock three in the, in the demo. One was better grip, like 6% grip, um, which was good to have in the weather. <laughs> um, there's another one for like a 10% XP bonus and then I can't remember what the other one was. But some of them will my and my understanding was some of them will go away after one race, yep. and some once you have them you can keep them. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a little different. I don't know how that translates to multiplayer. I don't know if you can use they, those. They don't exist in multiplayer. Okay, so Single it is just this only. campaign. Okay. Yep. Yep. I, I would think so because it would really kind of throw off the multiplayer. But yeah, um, yeah, it 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 looks good. I really was pretty impressed, and I'm excited now to. I'm glad I played the demo because I'm excited for the game. Yeah, the, the one, one, one thing, Forza 2 was like, you know, the first one for me as well, and, and it was a fantastic game, but what I think made it so much fun was that we were all playing it. You know, we were doing multiplayer races. We were just, you know, picking the big oval track and just like, you know, there was... what five six you know six of us in there and we were actually trying to race not to wreck each other or anything like that and it mm. made it so much fun when it was just like i can't catch it that we just had so much fun doing that and then forza 3 came out and only like half of us bought it yeah. you know or half of the people that were playing online and then forza 4 came out and a lot of people bought it but not very many people played it online you know that type of thing Forza 6, if we could, you know, if there was a group of people that played that and had a great time online, that I think is what makes it a must buy instead of just like, ah, I'm going to get it and I'm going to do a single, you know, single player. You know, it's fun. Yeah. Single player is fun. But I, the multiplayer is what really made that so much fun. Definitely with the community. And I know, like, people are going to get it. So I'm curious, Facebook group, maybe I'll have to go out there and start the group. Or, or start the, the post, like, who's getting Forza 6? Who wants to play online? You know, who wants to go out and have fun? Because I think that's where the game is. That That's the game to me. And, and it well, takes Ron, me we back. Can, we can start up Friday Night Life again, man. Yeah, that, that was always say, fun. that's what we're playing tonight is Forza 6. Yeah, so, and uh, Mark, you remember NASCAR racing season. Oh, yes, I do. That That right there was a blast because it was nothing but online you know what i mean it was so right. so tense and so much fun and and tweaking cars and i mean that was the thing where you you bumped into somebody or wrecked somebody you might as well just not go back to that <laughs> to that lobby because they got mad didn't they i mean people were serious about it it's like you had to have a wheel if you didn't have a wheel you were wrecking yep. and if you wrecked somebody the just chat just went <laughs> rated r you know just <laughs> just all the way up through there but uh dude i used to i used to race with a group of guys in chicago i mean they were dead serious right. about the game and oh my gosh i was you know we get over to the old land party haul your pcs over and everybody had their racing wheels and their pedals and you know i think one dude even had a shifter box and it, it was insane Mm -hmm. And these guys, I mean, these guys were friends. And they, I remember one night, I'm like, I think I'm going to leave because these dudes, got, this one guy got so angry that somebody bumped him or whatnot. And I'm just, you know, I'm thinking, dude, that's all I do. So I had to tell these guys, man, I'm new. I suck. I'm going to be in last place. I'm just here to have fun. But right. if I hit you, I apologize. It's not intentional. <laughs> apologize it's, up front. You know, I'm, I suck at this, you know. But I usually just would kind of lay off and let them go because I never was competing with – these guys would get down to the nitty gritty of that game and yeah. into the modding and tuning. And man, if you rub someone, boy, and yeah. these guys were almost getting physical. No, oh, I was yeah. like, dude, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. They just, they were so into it. But yeah, and, it, and it's I like do. Project, was it Project Cars or Project something? Yeah, Project out, Cars. It's a PC game that people are like, I mean, you pay a good bit of money and it's like people have all sorts of huge sets, setups for it. You can watch it on Twitch. I know Squirrel, he's a big YouTuber. He plays it all the time or whatever, but it's a 
you know die hard racing sim so but that that's what i miss is rubbing is racing though so i mean it is these guys rub and bump and grind and so when these guys get upset that hey you bought me that's what it is you're trying to win so but it was interesting you talked about when we raced with the community with uh was it forza four i don't remember we might have been i think it was forza two yeah it was two mainly when we were doing that Mm -hmm. um and i remember soul assassin and 808 (laughs) and myself we were both we were coming around the last turn biting and i and he was in front of me and i was drafting him and uh i went to the inside and on my screen i never touched him right but on his screen he said i bumped him right. and it was inter- i think if i recall he ha- he was recording it and when it played back you on he showed me it it showed i hit him right so but it was so i bumped him enough you know, again, not intentionally. I was just trying to cut on the inside, and I didn't know that I hit him. On, it didn't look like it on mine, but right. obviously I probably did, or it was lag or whatnot. But it was fun. I mean, he didn't get mad at me, but it was a great race that we had, and it's something that we talked about for a long time. So, yeah, so maybe we'll fun. have to spark it up again, Bron. Uh, but you can't you can't wait till like, next February to get this and expect everyone to play it either. Well, yes, I, I understand that. And understand this is starting the season of a new game every week, so... Everybody's got the new hotness they switch to every week. So right, Oof. <laughs> but I will have it. I've already got it downloaded, so I'll I'll be there anytime you want to play. All right, cool. So, uh, sorry, I didn't. I, I know we're kind of going off, but go ahead. What was your your next one? Is what I really want to hear about. But sorry, I got a. I had to get a little bit of water there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this will probably be the end of my talking here. Um, so I played. I have played a lot of Mad Max in the past week. I am so glad I bought this game. Um, I, I'm going to just get it out of the way. There, Right now, there's only one complaint that I have on this game. And I've got, I think, 29 hours Jeez. into the game. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect you to say that. That's okay. So... Is that why you're sick? Because you haven't slept any? Have you eaten? Oh, I yes, I have. <laughs> no, I came home. I was out of town last week. It came home to a sick family, mm. and it hit me big time last night. I was running a fever and everything last night. So today I just laid in my chair and didn't do anything. But um, I do need to get going to lay down here pretty soon because my back is killing me. But the uh, so I played a lot over this weekend. Um, and there's only one complaint, and that's the camera. So when you're in car combat or you're in foot combat, a lot of time the camera is too close to your character, and you can't see. So think of you can't see the enemies around you, or you don't you don't have enough area to sometimes to be able to parry their attack. Hmm. Um, so. The fighting style is very much like Batman, okay? It's basically the same thing. You know, you hit X to attack, you hit Y to parry. Um, And a lot of times when you're fighting a dude, it, like, focuses in because they want to be able to see the action and all the moves, which is cool. But the thing is you now can't see the guy coming in behind you, and you can't hit the parry button. So... It, it's it's really annoying. It's really frustrating. Sometimes I've gone in so far like Assassin's Creed used to do, where all of a sudden you couldn't even see your guy anymore. It's like you're staring at a wall, and you're getting beat up, and you can't see. Um, and the same with the cars. Sometimes they, they get too close at you. It's like they just need to pull that camera back a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't necessarily need to see all the individual moves, especially if I have to you know, block a move from another attacker. I need to be able to see that. So... That's my only complaint. It's not a game breaker. It's just something that really does annoy me. But I just try to keep... So when I get in a group, I actually try to move away so that I can keep them kind of in front of me and I can try to uh, keep it going that way. It's not the best way to combat that. So you can't really just stand there and fight them like in Batman where you can. Um, so I, I just wish the camera was back a little further. Is there, is there no field, field of view slider like in this... FOB um, or anything. I I don't a good question. I when I'm done talking here, I'll actually boot the game up and look okay. and see if there is an option. 
and um, and that way I can let everybody know. Uh, I have not checked. That's a good good question. Okay. Um, so the game is a lot of fun. It, it is. It's what I hoped it would be. Um, I was concerned about the car combat, and the car com the car combat is actually a ton of fun. It is a lot of fun, um, and it's not. It looked like kind of confusing when when I was watching. I watched a lot of a play of this game ahead of time. I was concerned you got to drive the car and do the combat at the same time, but it it's not really that hard because everything slows down when you hit the button to do like a combat move. So it really slows down. You really don't need. You can still steer the car, but you're actually moving so slow it really doesn't matter. So you get enough time to s swerve the camera around and target and hit the butt the b button to target you know shoot your your weapon and then do what you're doing with it but um yeah it's it's super fun i'm about 40 percent through the game i'm taking my time and doing like all the side stuff wiping out uh so like if you start out in one area and there's like sniper towers there's things called scarecrows which are these basically like a scarecrow it's on fire it's a big totem type of pole um, there's, uh, bases to take out. There's these events called top dogs where you basically go and kill a bunch of guys, take and then you fight this kind of mini boss character. Um, and they can be very challenging. And so you're trying to remove all the threats in the area. There's convoys to take out and you, you collect hood ornaments, which give your car boosts <clears throat> when you do that. Um, so there's a ton of stuff to do. Plus, looking for scrap, which is the loot or the money in the game. Drink, drink, drink. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so the game is just, it, it's fun. I love both both methods of combat are a lot of fun. I like going into the bases and working my way through. And um, there's sometimes there's different ways in. So what's cool is about the bases, sometimes you can sneak in. Some of them will have a kind of a hidden way in. So you can kind of avoid the base defenses, but I like to sit back with my car, take out the base defenses of these flame towers, um, these like mortar towers, sniper towers, all these different things. Um, so you got to look for like, you know, the fuel tanks that you can latch your harpoon and your gun on, and then you drive backwards to yank the fuel tank out, which kills the flame towers and stuff like that. You can drive into the sniper towers and, and stuff like that to knock them down and kill the snipers. Um, so it's like you're fighting all these base defenses and then once you get in, then you got to fight everybody inside. And <laughs> once you're inside, you're looking to do your objectives, like blow up all these fuel tanks. You're looking for loot. You're looking for insignias to, to destroy. And I've made it my mission that almost every single one I've been into, I've hundred percent found the loot, gotten all the insignias, found the historical items, um, it's like, I feel like compelled to find them all. I can't just walk out of the base if I know there's one piece of scrap left in there somewhere. <laughs> um, so it's kind of fun walking around trying to find the stuff. Um, now some of the things I've heard negative, the only thing I've really heard negative is people say, oh, well, the game's repetitive. And to be honest, I don't know of an open world game that's not repetitive. <laughs> yeah, true. You know, it's, um... Yeah, you clear out this guy and you do these jobs and you go here and you do this, you collect that, you build up, but you're ranking up Max, you're ranking and getting, you know, new abilities and skills for him. You're ranking up your car, getting new skills and abilities and weapons and defense for your car. Um, and the missions are fun. The characters are very interesting in the game. Uh, you're building up strongholds. It's like, so you go into this territory and you basically, I, like the first one, I cleared it all out of bad, uh, all the bad guys. All the threats were removed. I had the stronghold fully built. Then and, and so it was basically all peaceful. And you go into the next area and you start all over and kind of do that. And you're working to your end goal of getting to uh, Gas Town and stuff. So um, a lot of fun. I, I really am enjoying the game. The game is a lot of fun. Um, <coughs> Mad Max. Hold on. Mad Max. <laughs> Do yes, Mad <laughs> Max is a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. Highly recommend it to anybody that was considering it or, you know, looking for something fun to play. And it's going to be a long game, it, you know, um, depending on how you want to play it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what, like I said, I think it said 29 hours, 30 hours in. Um, I've only completed, I'm in the middle of the game. I'm in Act 3 of 5. 
Um, and I'm just not rushing through the story. I'm doing all the side stuff because I'm having fun with it. So you, this will probably be, oh, I'd say probably you could probably get 90 hours is my guess because I'm, well, maybe that might be a little high. I'm about 40% in at 30 hours. Okay. So, um, and I'm not doing a lot of fast travel. I'm doing a mostly the driving because then you find cars and you ram them. And then there's other cool stuff like if you are playing and you're not aware of this, when you get to your stronghold, go to your cleanup crew. You want that's one of the things I like the best. There's there's things you can build in the fortress, like an armory, a water dispenser, fuel, an am a fuel and ammo stuff, an armory. So that when you come, anytime you go in the stronghold, your your car's auto gassed up, you get full ammo on your belt, you get full water canteens filled, um, stuff like that. But there's also stuff called the cleanup crew, which means once you've got the cleanup crew built in your stronghold, when you're fighting cars and you defeat a car, they drop loot. Well, you don't have to get out anymore and pick it up. The cleanup crew will automatically gather that loot for you, which is really awesome. Cool. They've got a scrap crew, which as long as your Xbox is online, if you're not playing the game, you can still earn scrap in the game. So that's cool. You want to build that out because then you can come back when you come back and you're like, oh, hey, I got extra scrap. And it's like you're, you're earning money in the game when you don't play it. Um, so there's stuff like that, which is really cool. And then you got to do that in each area you go to. So the, the cleanup crew and stuff is only good for that particular warlords area if you will. I don't know what to call them I call them a warlord or the boss character that you're working with or the, in the stronghold that's it so in that strongholds area that cleanup crew is only good for that area so when you move into the next one you gotta find all these pieces to build that again so uh, it's fun I really enjoy it um, the missions are getting harder the cars are getting you know the battles are getting harder there's, there's new stuff that um, you get as we're progressing through the game um, it's a lot of fun. I'm really, really enjoying it. So, um, I'll just leave it at that. Just say, go get it, man. If you are thinking about it, I don't think you'll, I, it's not steering you wrong. It's absolutely fun. So, cause I was concerned. I was hesitant. Cool. The only reason I really bought it was cause I was needing something new to play and it, it turned out to be what I hoped it would be <laughs> a ton of fun. Yeah, no. I know a lot of people are also playing like Phantom Pain and stuff like that, but I don't think any of us have played that. I heard that's really good as well for people if you're looking for other things to play. Um, that's out there. So yeah, they both Metal Gear Solid Five, but yeah, came out the same day as Mad Max. Yeah. So so very cool. All right. Yeah, don't let don't look don't overlook Mad Max. Don't don't I hate I hopefully it doesn't get overlooked. It is a fantastic game if you've played Just Cause. This is the same studio that made Just Cause games. Um, it's the same developer. It's Avalanche. So, and, and it's good. It is really good. Yeah. Another another thing is on Monday, I was. Uh, it felt like I, I showed Mark a video before we started. It's like I felt like I was playing a football game uh, when Ohio State was playing Virginia Tech because Braxton Miller did. They called it a Madden spin move. Like. For, there for a while, they're calling him Braxton B. Button Miller because he puts a spin move on a guy that was just, it was one of the best plays I've ever seen. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, I mean, people's like, well, it's just a spin move. This was, this, this was crazy. When he watched the guy duck and he thinks he's going to hit somebody and it's just air because he spins out of his way. But it was just like, ah, oh, I feel like I'm playing a football game. But it was crazy. Um, uh, yeah, how to get my Buckeye plug in there. <laughs> but, uh, all right, cool. Um, So we're going to move forward. Rob, do you have anything? No. All right. You've been quiet. All right. So uh, patreon.com slash this Xbox life is one way to become a patron of our show. Uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, it helped us finally purchase all of our equipment and uh, you know, and soon you know we're going to be feeding back to the feeding back to the community, which is which is great. Um, and then also, if you would like to leave a tip, and our last tip, he's actually uh, in, in here watching the show was Drino eighty five. He gave us uh, ten bucks a couple weeks ago. Um, you can go to Twitch Alerts. 
patreon.com slash donate slash this Xbox life. And uh, again, I, I know I always say it, but you know, not expected, but greatly appreciated everything. It, you guys are fantastic community, so we couldn't ask for more. So, except for millions, millions and millions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, all right. So, roundtable. It, it's one of those. Uh, it seems like a lot of people were playing games. You know, tis the season where a new game is coming out. Like Mark said earlier, a game's coming out every week, so you, you gotta keep up you know keep up with the flow and and purchase a game every week so it's like what what news is there other than wait another week for the next game um so i have a couple things here i don't know how much round tabling it'll be but we will soon find out um the first thing i have here is uh destiny 2.0 so i'm a big destiny player um i know you guys aren't as much um but Destiny the Taken King comes out next week. Uh, so the 2.0 patch came out this week to kind of get everybody acclimated, if you want to say. Um, and then obviously that is a massive DLC expansion. Um, I know we've had, I've had an argument on our show that's like, this isn't an expansion, this is just DLC. Um, that was with what they gave us at the time. And then they come out and say, oh no, it's all of this stuff. And they could have saved themselves a lot of pain and suffering if they would have just told us what it was the first time um but it comes out next week so with the patch i'm gonna some high level things here because i the, the list is so long all i can tell you to do is go out and look for the patch notes if you want to see because it I, it would i take an hour talking about it um and also it's been covered a billion places but just real quick uh, it will require 18 gig of hard drive space on the PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, it'll take 10 gig on the 360. Uh, the PlayStation 3 users will require 20 gig of space, but only 10 gig once it's installed. Makes zero sense to me on that one. Other than... I, does that make sense to you guys? <laughs> I thought that was the most... We were talking about that today. It's like, oh, so on PS3, you need 20. You download 20 gig. It does the install, but only leaves 10. You know, the rest of the 10 gets deleted. It's some crazy thing. But um, So changes, extensive ones. Uh, you know, the big thing that you might notice is a lot of people didn't like like uh, Peter Dinklage, which is uh, he's in Game of Thrones. Um they replaced him with, um, oh, man. Was it Nolan North that's replacing? So Nolan North is, is the new voice of the ghost. So you can go out there and see some differences between the, the voices or whatever. When I downloaded, so I went in, and, and the big things here is I downloaded it. 18 gig. Took about two hours. So we've discussed this before. Um... I don't know if Xbox Live throttles their upload to, to us, but I know that I should be able to download 18 gig a lot faster than two and a half hours. Now, I know it's probably because a lot of people are downloading at the same time as I am, um, but it just seems like a, a massive, it's like it's such a long time to do it. But I, you know, I, I called my wife and I said, hey, honey, go, go turn on my Xbox, go click on Destiny. She goes, it's downloading an update. I said, just leave the Xbox on. Don't don't even attempt to turn it off. Just turn the TV off. So she turns off, and when I got home and then ate and stuff, it was at like 94%. And I went and did some of my other things and came back, and it was done. So I loaded into the game, and it is almost like it's a brand new game. I have to basically, it feels like I have to relearn everything that I knew before. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware, like you guys have both played Destiny, correct? I know Mark has. Rob? No, I haven't even tried it. Oh, you haven't even played it. Okay, well, you have different different levels of equipment. You have, you know, your blues, yeah, your, your blues, your greens, your purples, your exotics are yellow and stuff like that. Well, I have like all legendary and exotic armor. And I go in there 
and basically this 2.0 update is is this thing where it's like well a green or a blue may actually be better than your legendary and i'm like what and i didn't really think about it well i went in and got a, a bond off of this guy and it was blue first thing i did as i broke it down <laughs> I just destroyed it because I was just like, ah, it's a blue, and I destroyed it. And as it's getting to the very end of me destroying it and it goes away, I noticed that, uh, hey, thanks for following. Um, I noticed that it was better than the one that I had, and I automatically destroyed it. I was like, okay, I've already <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> so the only thing I can warn you on is light level doesn't matter anymore. The level cap's 34. When you get to in, and when the DLC comes out, if you have it, you'll be able to go to forty. Um, the armor you have now, uh, if it's legendary, it's pointless. The weapons you have now, they're legendary, they're pointless. Um, some exotics are moving up or can be ascended up to the higher level. Um, when I say pointless, I mean pointless until you get one of the newer weapons, which is better. But uh, just a ton of things going on with the game and stuff like that. So go out there and, uh, uh, read up on it. Uh, I know it's going to take me some time. Basically you're going to have to relearn the game. Um, that's the easiest way I can put it. No, oh, thanks. And, and that's what I was getting ready to ask <laughs> is I know Mark, you've played it before. Are you interested in going in and trying it now that it's all changed? No, Nope. Not at all. Nope. Nope. And Rob, I'm not even going to ask because <laughs> it's still the same. I'd still have to grind. It's just a grind fest. What level yeah. are you? I think I hit 30 finally. I don't oh, think okay. I got past 30. I'm 30, 31. I don't remember if I hit 31, but okay. I know I did finally hit 30. Yeah. I think that's where I left off, but Yeah, my big you know, thing is I'd have to I'd have to pay for the Taken King if I was going to do more of it cuz I I have no desire to play the same stuff over and over and over again. Right. And I, I'm, I put enough time on Destiny. Yeah, and, and with mine, it's like, I know uh, I'm glad I didn't try to level up my third character. I think I'm a level five or something like that, my third character. Because with the Taken King, you get one thing that bumps you from whatever level to 25. <laughs> I was like, yes! <laughs> I was like, I don't, have to, I don't have to work that much on my third character. But my other two characters are... 34 and i'm just waiting on the level cap to go up so i can do that but uh we'll be playing some destiny in the future until halo comes out for sure but uh rob any interest do you uh, do you own it wow would you believe for a game i don't like i have 126 hours in it in destiny <laughs> that's that's what it's claiming i don't that's what it says on the game hub leaderboard i don't believe that that's true jeez I can't lot. just you sitting that at the menu. I don't know. That can't be right. Yeah. Maybe it includes the three weeks it took to download it. I don't know. <laughs> Is there a way to Is tell? They... I'm wondering on the app. If there's a way I can tell on the app. Do you go to achievements and it'll tell you under there and maybe under the summary? It's the um I think on the oh, achievements okay. it used to. It does. It tells still. I'm two forty two. Yeah, I was just looking. You're yeah, two forty two is what I see for you. So, yeah, for someone who vehemently despises Bungie, I got 126 hours in that stupid game. Yeah. So. Oh. And and uh, it wasn't bad. It was fun to a point. That's the problem. Yeah, and I enjoyed it to a point, and then um, just some of the other stuff that they've done with the DLC, and now they want to overcharge again, and I, that that was all bad sour grapes in my mouth the only reason i played the dlc that came out because i bought the season pass out the gate yeah. i was stupid you know and i feel like they kind of stabbed me you know in the back for being a supporter of bungie and i just i'm not buying the taken king and i'm i'm not giving them my money yeah. is it gonna affect them no i don't know no but and, and that's I, i'm not gonna support them at the same time so I, when i bought the season pass you know i bought it as well and i felt kind of burnt on that as well and when they and when they first came out and they're like oh well the taking king it's going to be a new raid and some new strikes and i'm like okay and they're like well for people that own the destiny it's going to be 40 dollars 
But if you don't own Destiny, you can pay $60 and get everything. Yep. And I was just like, <laughs> you're kidding me. I was like, I'm getting... I, I feel like I'm getting ripped off. I'm getting oh. just, you know, and it was like that for two weeks until like, I think E3 or whatever. And they're like, okay, okay. The Taken King is not just a strike in this. It is, we're revamping the game. We're changing this, we're changing this. And basically it is like a brand new game. And, and it was like an, ex it's like an expansion. So I re thought about my thing and I went out and I got it. So I was like, okay. I have enough time into it. I know I'm going to have fun with people because I got a good group that I play with. Um, so I went out and bought it. But that first initial, when they came out and talked about, because they were just like, "Oh yeah, it's forty bucks. You guys will, you guys will pay for it and play it." I think it was Luke Smith that put his foot in his mouth, and then had to apologize. And Bungie had to apologize and everything. And then it was two weeks later they came out with all the stuff that's really coming out with it. And I was just like, "Why didn't you do that in the first place?" You want to tick everybody off? <laughs> it's like you so. Did, are you buying the Taken King? I already did. You did. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, already got it. I uh, pre-ordered it so I could get some of the other weapon packs that so I don't have to wait till like the first or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I I did it because basically without the Taken King, you know, I still would have got update two. I'd still be at where I'm at now, except I'd be level capped, and I'd be stuck with doing whatever i would be able to do now so right, and you wouldn't be able to play with any of your friends because they're all going to move forward and yeah so you either pay them more money or you move on to a different game right. that's True. that's what it is yep. you know and i just um i don't know i'm so i'm actually surprised you're doing it well here let me because, tell you let me tell you because, why well let me let me say why okay. i'm surprised okay because you're so much against the annual renewals the the e, the Maddens and the NHLs and the NBAs and mm -hmm. you know they do this every year and they just churn it out it's just the same thing. This really is you know Bungie's got a ten year plan and Activision wants content out every, all the time. Yeah, this is the this yearly is, release. This is essentially this will be the yearly release. That's exactly and, what I told you at work. And you're paying for it. All right. So I'm kind of surprised with all that's gone on that you aren't taking a stand but you know i know you like the game right so right. i mean i'm not faulting it just kind of surprised me that that you did but that's cool well you know you want to you know you want to know why yeah the honest reason yeah because the game got delayed until december oh yeah yeah because the game that i was going to buy in two weeks from now is delayed all the way until december so oh the uh siege yeah it was siege <laughs> So basically, I was like, "Well, I guess I save myself twenty bucks. I'll get the Taken King. That'll last me up till Halo, which is the end of October, and then, you know, I'll, I'll go from there." Because the thing is, is I, I would have, I'd own the Taken King no matter what. It was just when was I going to get it, and I wasn't going to get it at on day one. But then when they came out, they're like, "Oh, you know, I know we were coming out. What? When were they supposed to come out? October 9th or something like that." Or, or 13th or, or early October and when they said oh we're not coming out now and I was just like all right I guess I'll <laughs> get the Taken King and yeah. play that <laughs> so but yeah that that was what drove uh, actually caused me to go buy it was mm. siege delaying which is a massive mistake on their yeah. part that was a dumb mistake on their part to do that but what do I know I don't I mean maybe the game is broken so Right. Okay, uh, a couple other things. Mark, you put in here. Uh, Castle Castle Crashers. You guys are a fan of that. Rob, are you a fan of Castle Crashers? You were, weren't you? Uh, no, I don't think I ever played it. <laughs> Do you I play any it. games, Rob? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. No, this was just one that I it just it just didn't interest me at all. Right. So I, I totally passed on it when it came out and I mean, this was going back, what, probably five years ago, maybe? 2008 for the 360. Ooh. Okay. So what's the premise of Castle Crashers? I didn't really play. I didn't play it either, so I got to ask. It's a multiplayer side-scrolling beat-em-up in which you play as one of four knights out to save the kingdom from the antics of an evil wizard. <laughs> you know this each by night, heart. <laughs> each knight packs a bevy of unique themed moves. 
And as you move about Castle Crusher's world, you earn experience points, level up, and get access to a steady stream of new weapons and abilities. It gets even better when you add friends, up to three, into the mix for some fast, chaotic, brawling action. Yeah, that's just all off the top of my head. <laughs> Sounded like it. <laughs> so they, they remastered the game, and it, uh, it it's is... It's $15 on Xbox One, but if you bought it on 360, you get it for free between now and September 20th. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and if you don't if you don't get it for free before the 20th, then it's only it's only going to cost you $5 after that to to buy the the newer. So there's that, that's kind of interesting. I, I that they'll give it to you free if you grab it right away. Mm-hmm. Then after that, you know, they're only charging you 5 bucks. Yeah. So it's still $5 is not nothing to sneeze at. Look, so. a, a yeah. somebody that's opposite of Activision. Somebody's actually giving you something. Hey, we remastered this game. You've already bought it. You're our friends. Hey, you can have Activision it. is giving you uh, Destiny, an expansion for $40. Yeah. They're giving you that for the low, low price of $40. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yep. All right. And uh, what was it? A couple, couple weeks ago. I think actually the last time you were on, Mark. You're talking about um, the, what's the developer press play? Right? Yes. Okay. So press play was having a little contest or letting people decide on which game they were going to develop next, and I think there was a choice of three. Correct. And and you rattled them all off. Well, they kind of they found out what they're going to be developing next. Yep. The uh, community has voted for Project Knoxville which is the third-person multiplayer action game that deals with fragile alliances and survival in a game show setting. It's inspired by films like The Running Man and The Hunger Games, and players must work together and against each other. Uh, and this is just the beginning. Press Play's community will get the chance to engage with the studio throughout Knoxville's open development. <clears throat> so they're working to put the prototype into a shareable state. So for now, if you can check videos, go to Press Play's official website for more information. Very cool. It reminds uh, when you say like running a game show setting, like Running Man stuff. I always think of Smash TV. Yeah. You guys played Smash TV, right? I did not. Oh my gosh! You know what I'm talking about, though, right? Big I've money, heard of it. big prizes. It's like it was an arcade game where um, I think he had two joysticks, and there was a red guy and a and a blue guy, and you would just go room to room. And, you know, one stick would be the direction you're shooting. One stick would be the way you move back around. And you'd shoot guys coming through four doors. And, like, gold and stuff would be falling underground. Rob, do you know what I'm talking about? Vaguely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, look up Smash TV. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, very cool. That's cool. Um, one more story. Did you guys see that uh, the composer for Bungie or the co- whatever co-creator of Bungie, the guy that did all the music for Halo and stuff like that, won his lawsuit? Marty O'Donnell? Is that who it was? Is that He's the composer of the music for, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he won yeah. his lawsuit against those guys. Yep. Basically, uh, the way I take it is wrongful termination, but um, there's actually, uh, I don't know if you guys read the article on it, and I'm going off the top of my head, so I can't remember exactly everything. Um, but kind of what I got out of it was he made the music for the game and for a trailer and everything. And then Activision comes in and wanted to throw in their canned music from like another game and ripped his stuff out. And he was like completely offended by it, which rightfully so, if you ask me. Um, so he basically threw a little fit about it and everything. And then that kind of led to them uh, firing him. Um, let's say, uh, but he won his lawsuit. So they have to reinstate all his shares that he had. They have to pay him for the, I think time, the, like the time off or something like that. I mean, it's just this massive settlement and stuff. And the whole time I'm just like clapping my hands because I'm, I was happy for him that he won. I I just think, and, and they kind of, the way they talked about it was what led to it was Activision sticking their hand into it like they had to jump in and and do something so that's what t- 
to me kind of let it. I don't think it had anything to do with Bungie there for a while. Um, but as soon as they came in and decided that they had to do, you know, whatever he did, it was, you know, kind of went from there. Kept his, uh, see, Marty kept his preferred shares in company and only made 100000 or so last year. Seems low based on sales of Destiny. Yeah, so, uh, good for him. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, why would you want canned old a game or music from another game when you have like a composer who's won awards for his music in gaming <laughs> I, was like, I don't i don't get it so but uh yeah that was another another big thing but uh anything else guys no maybe no i'm ready to go man yeah <laughs> all right yeah, if, uh, if you're coming in yeah. late or listening now or, or whatever, Wingman is not feeling well, so uh, we're trying to keep it short, even though we're <laughs> not too short. We're over an hour. <laughs> we're in over an hour. Right. We try every time. Hey, let's keep this. You know, try to. I don't feel well. Um, but So uh, let's just jump to the releases. <laughs> yeah, so, well, okay, before we go there, um, Cafe Press, if you want to look like you're part of the community, uh, purchase some merchandise from the community, go to cafepress.com slash thisxboxlife. Uh, multiple ways to get a hold of us. You can send us voicemails. You can send us emails. You can tweet us. You can be on Facebook. Uh, and we're in all of those areas. So contact at thisxboxlife.com is the email. Thisxboxlife.com is our website where you can, on the right-hand side, send us a voicemail. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash groups slash thisxboxlife. I believe that's right. And our Twitter handle is uh, thisxboxlife, of course. Um, but yeah. All right, Rob games, lots of games. All right. Out. So this coming week, uh, for the Xbox one, we have Leo's fortune coming out on September 11th, Forza six on the, or Forza Motorsport six. Mm-hmm. I believe you're familiar with that one since we spent like half an hour talking about it. <laughs> uh, that is coming out on the 15th, uh, Pez. 2016, and that's not the candy. That's Pro Evolution Soccer 2016, also coming out on the 15th. Destiny, the Taken King on the 15th, and NHL 16 on the 15th as well. For the 360, we have Pro Evolution Soccer uh, 2016, Destiny, the Taken King, and NHL Legacy Edition. Uh, Those are all releasing on September 15th. Uh, then there's a couple I saw that showed up in the store today. I figure I may as well throw these out as well. Cluster Puck 99 is now out for the Xbox One. Aratana and the Harpy's Feather. This is a, kind of an interesting looking game. I This is uh, one of the things that kind of annoys me about the Xbox One store where you go into a game and you're like, oh, this looks interesting. Let me find out some more information about it. So there's a tiny little paragraph about what the game is. There's four still shots and then the hub. Thank you for not telling me anything. I wish they would have trailers. Just have something like where you can see what the game's about, what it looks like. But anyway, from the still shots, this kind of looks like it might be something I might enjoy. Um Looks like kind of like a side scroller type of thing, but then again, uh, who knows? If we had a trailer, maybe it'll just be something totally passed by. Anyway, uh, oh, and it does look like you can try it for free, by the way. Uh, then uh, we also have Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. And I believe that is it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and we also have uh, Transformers Devastation for uh, digital pre-order. So that's it for the releases uh, for the next coming week. And then, uh, as usual, just want to mention that if you're going to be making any purchases on Amazon, please, please, please use our affiliate link. You can get to that affiliate link by going to this Xbox Life, uh, dot com forward slash Amazon or even easier Just click uh, into this xboxlife.com and then click on the big Amazon smiley face logo on the right hand side of the page. That'll take you to Amazon where you can search for whatever you want and uh, make sure 
to use that each and every time that you shop at Amazon. It helps support the show. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So uh, you can get whatever goods you want and support your favorite podcast at the same time. That's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> and if you're a user on iTunes, uh, if you can do us a favor and rate us five stars, give us a little review on the iTunes store. That'll help uh, have us be a featured podcast in the slew of podcasts that they have out there. So uh, if you're out there, just take a few moments, uh, do that and uh, help us out. And I believe that is all for episode 358. All right. Yep. 358, green, green, green. <laughs> green, racing, green, green. Raising term. So, all right. Anything else, Mark? You're ready to go. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. Uh, we appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. And I'm um, Brun BJ Swick 33. I'm Rob, also known as Prestar. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you all on episode 359. I'm Mark, a.k.a. Wingman709, taking off. <laughs>